When he came to New York in 1934, he came with two friends, a man named Nicky de Gonsberg, who was a Russian baron. Um, uh, he had the title. He basically had very little money because his family, the Jewish family, had made their money in oil in Russia before the revolution, and of course lost it uh, in the revolution. Um, the other person he traveled with was a woman named Natasha Paley. She was the niece of the Tsar, um, and she uh, was also she was a princess. Um, anyway, so the three of them, uh, all with titles, arrived in New York with no money and uh, immediately went out to Hollywood with the hope of getting work or doing something because everybody in Europe was taken by the glamour of Hollywood. Um, Nicky actually got a job working in the movies. He played the part of Dracula in one of the movies. And Natasha ended up actually being an actress, sort of a B actress. She used to play a lot with, uh, in films with Catherine Hepburn. Uh, Verdura did not find work. He was hoping to design costumes, but no one wanted him as a costume designer. So he went back to New York and he got a job. Um, we don't know exactly how it came about, but we know that the job uh, was, the person that helped him get a job was Diana Vreeland again, who keeps popping up. Um, she knew the society jeweler in New York, who was the most important jeweler in New York at the time, a man named Paul Flato. And uh, Flato wasn't a designer, but he had people designing for him. And it, he, had an, uh, he had a very, very successful business. Not only was he successful in New York, he was very successful uh, selling to Hollywood stars. So um, Flato hired Verdura, and very shortly thereafter, uh, well, the reason I'm sure he hired him was because he, he, everybody knew that he was the designer for Chanel, so that was a, a feather in his hat to have Chanel's designer designing his jewelry. And pretty soon the ads changed from uh, uh, Paul Flato jewelry to Paul Flato jewelry designed by the Duke de Verdura. So he, he was making a name for himself before he even, even got it out of the box. He was, he was being publicized. And uh, I mean, he made some very interesting things. In fact, a book came out a couple of years ago about Flato, and the piece on the cover was the, was the very first important piece that Verdura designed um, when he came, when he started working for Flato, and it was made, again, for Porter. It was commissioned by, by Cole Porter for his wife, Linda. It's quite dramatic. Anyway, so um, he worked for Flato in New York for about a year and a half, and then Flato wanted to open a store in Hollywood. And he, uh, he, he opened a, a rather beautiful store, sort of Art Deco store on Sunset Boulevard, and he sent Verdura out to Hollywood to run it. So Verdura was in Hollywood for, I guess, about a year and a half or two years. And then in the um, end of 1939, it came to light, unfortunately, that uh, Paul Flato had a cocaine habit, and he'd been swapping his clients' real stones for fake ones. And, uh, it was front page New York Times news, and he was sentenced to Sing Sing prison, which is a pretty bad for a jeweler, and it's a pretty bad prison too. Anyway, um, everybody knew that Verdura was his head designer by that time, so uh, his boss went, as it were, up the river, which is where it is, and uh, that, again, it was sort of unfortunate in a way, I mean, that it happened that way, but, uh, that gave Verdura the opportunity to open his own business. And he was, uh, uh, he had the background of being, worked for Flato in Hollywood. He'd worked with all the clients in New York and he's a very lucky man to be in the right place at the right time. Um, after uh, Paul Flato went to jail at the basic, I think it was the end of August, well, Foucault decided because he was the designer that he, he would have an opportunity to start his own business because um, Flato had a great clientele, and where were they going to go? And also, the clientele knew that Foucault had been designing the jewelry, not only on the East Coast, but the West Coast. The Hollywood crowd knew him because he'd been out there. So uh, he, he went to his friend yet again, Cole Porter. And Cole uh, uh, gave him $10,000, and he, um, he went to Vincent Astor, who he also knew, who was uh, the richest man in New York, but also head of sort of society people here in New York. Anyway, um, they each put up $10,000, and with the seed money, he rented an office on the fourth floor of 712 Fifth, which was uh, the original office of Cartier when they first moved here, before they got the townhouse on 52nd Street. 
and uh, off and running. He had, uh, he decorated it in sort of red, it did look Sicilian, sort of red plush with lots of gold trim. Um, and he, uh, it was, well, it was also the same day the Germans invaded Poland. So the Americans that were used to going to Europe to buy their jewelry, and then Americans were known to buy jewelry mostly in Paris, they couldn't go. So he had a captive audience, and he, he had the reputation of having designed Chanel's jewelry, personal jewelry. He had the reputation for having designed for uh, Flato for five years. So he, uh, he was off and running, and he became pretty much an instant success.